The question you've been asking me is, why do I turn the steering wheel only one turn in one type of parking, a turn and a quarter in another, all the way in another, and so on? Obviously, the sharper the turn, the more we need to turn the steering wheel. For example, if I'm on a curve like this one, I'll turn the wheel only slightly. If I'm turning at a 90 degree intersection, I'll turn the wheel more, three quarters of a turn for example. If I'm doing a U-turn, I might turn the wheel all the way and so on. So it's the same when reversing. The more you turn your steering wheel when reversing, the sharper the angle the vehicle will have. In other words, the less distance it will take to be closer to the sidewalk if you're parallel parking. For example, I'm here, if I turn the steering wheel only slightly, it will take let's say all this distance before I hit the curb. If I turn it half a turn, it will take this distance more or less. If I turn it one complete turn, it will take this distance and so on. So that's the reason why I recommend turning the wheel different amounts depending on the distance you have between the vehicles where you're parking. Just a note, to avoid confusion, keep in mind that whenever I'll talk about how much I turn the steering wheel in this video, it's always in the first step before reversing right after having a line myself. Be it parallel parking, parking between cones or at an angle. How much I turn it in the other steps remains the same as I explained it in the respective videos. So the method for parallel parking I recommend the most is to align your side mirror with the other vehicle's side mirror, then turn the steering wheel just one turn before reversing. And the reason I recommend this method, it's because it's the easiest, but also the safest one. But for that, you need to have enough room at least three feet from both of the vehicles you're parking between. It won't work if your parking spot is too tight. With this method, when you turn the steering wheel only one turn just before reversing, in the next step, where you turn the wheel completely to the left and reverse, you'll always keep more or less the same distance from the vehicle on your side as you had when you aligned yourself. And I literally measured this. If you start with more or less two and a half to three feet from the other vehicle, which is the distance I recommend, you'll still have more or less that distance between you and the vehicle during the whole reversing process, provided you align yourself properly to begin with. Not so if you turn the wheel completely. Another reason why I recommend this method is for the exam, where you want it to be the easiest and the safest possible. At the exam here, they usually make you park where there is enough room to use this method, even sometimes in a spot where there's no vehicle behind. In some places, You'll park in a parking lot between vehicles that are parked there permanently only for the purpose of testing your parallel parking and you usually have enough room to do it this way. So now using that logic of the more you turn the steering wheel the quickest you'll get close to the curb, if you tried this method of turning the wheel just one turn and you keep getting too far from the curb, turn the steering wheel a bit more than one turn towards the curb before reversing. If you keep getting too close to the curb, turn the wheel a bit away from the curb before reversing. Now in my video on parallel parking in a tight spot, I recommend turning the wheel one and a quarter turn. Why just one and a quarter instead of all the way? Well basically, for the same reason as in the previous example, there's a lesser risk of hitting the vehicle on your side when reversing after the second step. This way, you'll need to make a few more maneuvers after you're in between the two vehicles, but it's safer. Now it doesn't mean that you'll hit the car on your side if you turn the steering wheel all the way, but that's your safety margin and we should always keep a safety margin in any situation when driving. Besides, it's very hard to judge the distance from the other vehicle from inside the car, so we might as well be on the safe side. When parking between cones, I recommend turning the steering wheel all the way. The reason for that is that since the cones are low and angled towards the inside, there's a lesser risk of hitting them as compared to a vehicle, let's say, which is more at a vertical angle, therefore closer to you. So by turning it all the way, you'll need to do fewer maneuvers to straighten the car in the later steps. However, if you're parking between those cones that are straight and larger, you might want to use the method of turning the wheel one and a quarter turn and had a few more maneuvers when straightening the car at the end. So basically, the tighter the parking spot, the more you'll need to turn the wheel before reversing. Just make sure to always keep a safe distance from the vehicle to your side. The same goes when you're parking at 45 degrees or 90 degrees. The sharper the turn, the more you need to turn the steering wheel. So when parking at 45 degrees where the angle is wider, I recommend to turn the steering wheel only one turn. And at 90 degrees, since the turn will be sharper, I recommend turning the wheel all the way. By the way, 
A lot of people ask me, do you have this or that specific type of parking video? And a lot of times I do. So if you want to find any other of my videos on parking, just do a search on my channel. To do that, click on my channel name or logo. Then on the next page, click on the search icon. Then type parallel parking to watch those kinds of videos. 45 parking. 90 parking. Or just parking to get the results for videos on any type of parking. Of course, that also works for any other keywords. So for example, if you want to watch some videos on turning, just type the words turn or turning. The next video will be about how to deal with emergency vehicles. So stay tuned and see you soon.